Hello. Road deaths have been declining in developed nations for 30 years, a game only America has been winning. Common wisdom is that Americans wage a fear-based arms race, buying bigger SUVs to feel safe around bigger SUVs. And as a consequence, road users are left playing pinball with wrecking balls. The freedom of the American road. But light trucks are now booming everywhere. SUVs made 80% of Canadian car sales in 2020. So we should realize that the size of the vehicle is not actually the problem. The truth is much much dumber. A tsunami of supersized American-style pickup trucks are hitting Melbourne roads. It's banning SUVs altogether in towns and cities across the EU. Most SUV buyers were assholes. First off, the vitriol against large vehicles is misplaced. The larger the vehicle, the safer for its occupants. That might wilt your heart on for Scandinavian lifestyle, but it doesn't make it any less true. Yeah, Nuke yeah, my yeah, bike! Yeah. It's messed up! Big vehicles are protective. So the fear that leads people to buy more car than their neighbor is founded. And one can imagine a future where we all bump around in land blimps, and that would logically be safer. If a detriment to urban planning. Did you guys hear that? Unfortunately, not everyone can join the arms race. American roads are deadlier than ever for pedestrians, cyclists, and most of all, motorcyclists who share lanes with tanks. For deaths to be climbing, despite us driving panic shelters with forward collision sensors and automatic braking, there must be something extra hazardous here for other road users. But it's not the size. 45, make us a crash dummy. I'm about to drive my 2,500 kilo truck at 50 kph into a 90 kilo perfectly elastic man. Conservation of momentum and kinetic energy say he will very rapidly be doing 96 and a half kilometers per hour, and that impulse will kill him. But we could subtract 1,000 kilos from the equation and be doing like two kph less. See, vehicles are just so massive compared to people, the specific mass of the vehicle itself just doesn't figure. So what does? Well, here he is, boss. I mean, he's roughly our height and weight, and I love him. I mean, honestly, it's been getting pretty lonely around the shop these days, and I... Oh, okay, yeah. We can see that a low, sloped hood deflects the dummy upward. It might not look it, but that's a good thing. See, a higher hood would make contact with that person's center of mass more efficiently and more catastrophically shunting them forward. This perfectly delivered impulse is what kills people, and the cause is aesthetic. Ever notice how grills keep growing? What used to be small and sloped is now a rolling billboard for the brand, and every brand is guilty of it. Look at this plow. The hood actually goes up from the windowsills to project a higher facade, and that grill height is our killer. Justin Tyndall published the partial effect paper in this month's issue of Economics of Transportation. It's the first to do a regression analysis of specific crash vehicle dimensions. Regression analysis. Up till now, we've known that the heavier the car, well, the more people that it strikes dead. And we know that SUVs will kill more people than cars and pickups more yet. But which is it? Will a Fiat 500 made of lead be deadly? Will an El Camino slay millions because it's a pickup? Mm, I doubt it. What if we consider specifically the frontal height? Binary logistic regression puts a number on each of these variables' ability to predict life or death. Front height is most determinant, with a 95 to 99% confidence interval. So it's the grills, and that's good news. It means we can have our big vehicles, 3,000 kilos, seven hockey boys. It's no problem. We just have to slant the hoods down more, and we'll save lives. 
Tindall calculates that a mere 10 centimeter drop in front height decreases the probability of killing a pedestrian 22 to 28 percent. And you can run regressions for other covariates like age. Finding that same 10 centimeter drop decreases the probability of killing a kid 81 percent. The IIHS numbers agree. You want to hit people with wedges, not walls. Unless it's a lawyer. I don't know if I have enough cones, actually. There are other benefits to a slanted hood besides. I might be able to check my dipstick without needing to pull out a steppy stool for spanning the square yard of freedom. And I might be able to see a little more of the 12 toddler blind zone. And I might get a grill that isn't 80% fake jewelry because, well, no radiator actually needs a hectare of intake. I admit this looks badass. To quote the designer, I remember wanting it to feel very locomotive, like a massive fist moving through the air. But having lived with the fist, it's not really practical. Unfortunately, I only spent 150 bucks for a day's trial, and you can rent your motorcycle for similar money with our sponsor, Riders Share. Some of their top listers are earning thousands per month. If you're agonizing over selling a bike, Ridershare can make it profitable to keep. Or following the N plus one rule, Ridershare makes it logical to buy another motorcycle. Darling. With a 30,000 strong community of peer-to-peer -peer motorcycle renters and 30,000 in coverage for damage or theft, you can click the link below, post up your bike, and start earning passive income with very little effort. Now, speaking of large effects with little effort, let's end by hypothesizing limiting all front heights to 125 centimeters. That's not hard. It's just a design choice that big vehicles used to make and one that most vans still do. Tyndall calculates that capping front heights at 125 centimeters will save 509 lives a year in the US. That's an Airbus A380. Imagine if terrorists crashed an A380 every year and we could stop them just by recognizing that we have enough space for a less ridiculous grill design. Fortnite knows there are no participation medals in the real world. That's why we give 49 J.B. Peterson awards to vehicles that can headshot any child under four foot six. Easy. If you work hard to stay on top, you need a grill that's built to ram. Ah, oh, it's beautiful, comrade. It's very nice. <laughs> wow. The are supposed to be quiet. Do the ones inside, yes. <laughs> uh, you want to get closer then? Or? Yeah, a little closer would be good. <laughs>